Adivasi is the collective term for the indigenous peoples of mainland South Asia. Adivasi make up 8.6% of India's population, or 104 million people, according to the 2011 census, and a large percentage of the Nepalese population. They comprise a substantial indigenous minority of the population of India and Nepal and a minority group of the Sri Lankan society called Veda. The same term Adivasi is used for the ethnic minorities of Bangladesh and the native Taru people of Nepal. The word is also used in the same sense in Nepal, as is another word, Janajati Nepali, Janajati Janajati, although the political context differed historically under the Shah and Rana dynasties. Adivasi societies are particularly prominent in Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Gujarat, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Odisha, West Bengal, and some northeastern states, and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Many smaller tribal groups are quite sensitive to ecological degradation caused by modernization. Both commercial forestry and intensive agriculture have proved destructive to the forests that had endured Swidden agriculture for many centuries. Adivasis in central part of India have been victims of the Salwa Judam campaign by the government against the Naxalite insurgency. <laughs> Connotations of the word Adivasi The word Adivasi means the first inhabitants or the indigenous people, a phrase recognized by the Supreme Court of India. Although terms such as Adivika, Vanavasi, forest dwellers, or Garijan, mountain people, are also used for the tribes of India, Adivasi carries the specific meaning of being the original and autochthonous inhabitants of a given region. It is a modern Sanskrit word specifically coined for that purpose in the 1930s, from Adi beginning, origin and Vasan dweller itself from Vas to dwell, thus literally meaning original inhabitant. Over time, unlike the terms aborigines or tribes, the word Adivasi has developed a connotation of past autonomy disrupted during the British colonial period in India and not yet having been restored. In India, opposition to usage of the term is varied. Critics argue that the original inhabitant contention is based on the fact that they have no land and are therefore asking for a land reform. The Adivasis argue that they have been oppressed by the superior group and that they require and demand a reward, more specifically land reform. Adivasi issues are not related to land reforms but to the historical rights to the forests that were alienated during the colonial period and India finally made a law to undo the historical injustice committed to the Adivasis in northeast India. The term Adivasi applies only to the tea tribes imported from central India during colonial times. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Geographical overview. A substantial list of scheduled tribes in India are recognized as tribal under the Constitution of India. Tribal people constitute 8.6% of the nation's total population, over 104 million people according to the 2011 census. One concentration lives in a belt along the Himalayas stretching through Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, and Uttarakhand in the west, to Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram, Manipur, and Nagaland in the northeast. In the northeastern states of Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Mizoram, and Nagaland, more than 90% of the population is tribal. However, in the remaining northeast states of Assam, Manipur, Sikkim, and Tripura, tribal peoples form between 20 and 30% of the population. Other tribal peoples, including the Santhals, Oran, Munda, Ho live in Jharkhand and West Bengal. Central Indian states have the country's largest tribes, and, taken as a whole, roughly 75% of the total tribal population live there, although the tribal population there accounts for only around 10% of the region's total population. Smaller numbers of tribal people are found in Odisha in eastern India, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, and Kerala in southern India, in western India in Gujarat and Rajasthan, and in the Union territories of Lakshadweep and the Andaman Islands and Nicobar Islands. About 1% of the populations of Kerala and Tamil Nadu are tribal, whereas about 6% in Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka are members of tribes. <laughs> <laughs> Scheduled tribes The term «Scheduled Tribes» first appeared in the Constitution of India. 
Article 366 25 defined scheduled tribes as such tribes or tribal communities or parts of or groups within such tribes or tribal communities as are deemed under Article 342 to be scheduled tribes for the purposes of this Constitution." Article 342, which is reproduced below, prescribes procedure to be followed in the matter of specification of scheduled tribes. Constitutional safeguards for STs Topic Educational and cultural safeguards Art. 15 4, Special provisions for advancement of other backward classes which includes STs, Art. 29 Protection of interests of minorities which includes STs, Art. 46 The state shall promote, with special care, the educational and economic interests of the weaker sections of the people, and in particular, of the scheduled castes, and the scheduled tribes, and shall protect them from social injustice and all forms of exploitation. Art. 350 Right to conserve distinct language, script or culture. Art. 350 Instruction in mother tongue. Topic. Social safeguard. Art. 23 Prohibition of traffic in human beings and beggar and other similar form of forced labor Art. 24 Forbidding child labor Topic Economic safeguards Art.244 Clause 1 Provisions of Fifth Schedule shall apply to the administration and control of the scheduled areas and scheduled tribes in any state other than the states of Assam, Meghalaya, Mizoram and Tripura which are covered under Sixth Schedule, under Clause 2 of this article. Art. 275 Grants in aid to specified states STs and SAS covered under 5th and 6th schedules of the Constitution. <laughs> Political safeguards Art.164 provides for tribal affairs ministers in Bihar, MP and Orissa Art. 330 Reservation of seats for STs in Lok Sabha Art. 337 Reservation of seats for STs in state legislatures Art. 334 to 10 years period for reservation amended several times to extend the period Art. 243 Reservation of seats in panchayats Art. 371 Special provisions in respect of Ne states and Sikkim Topic safeguards under various laws The Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes Prevention of Atrocities Act, 1989 and the Rules 1995 framed thereunder. Bonded Labor System Abolition Act 1976 in respect of scheduled tribes, the Child Labor Prohibition and Regulation Act 1986, States Acts and Regulations Concerning Alienation and Restoration of Land Belonging to STs, Forest Conservation Act 1980, Forests Rights Act 2006, Panchayatiraj Extension to Scheduled Areas Act 1996, Minimum Wages Act 1948. Particularly vulnerable tribal groups The scheduled tribe groups who were identified as more isolated from the wider community and who maintain a distinctive cultural identity have been categorized as particularly vulnerable tribal groups PTGs, previously known as primitive tribal groups by the government at the center. So far 75 tribal communities have been identified as particularly vulnerable tribal groups in different states of India. These hunting, food gathering, and some agricultural communities, have been identified as less acculturated tribes among the tribal population groups and in need of special programs for their sustainable development. The tribes are awakening and demanding their rights for special reservation quota for them. History Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Ancient India Although considered uncivilized and primitive, Adivasis were usually not held to be intrinsically impure by surrounding usually Dravidian or Aryan casted Hindu populations unlike Dalits who were 
Thus, the Adivasi origins of Valmiki, who composed the Ramayana, were acknowledged, as were the origins of Adivasi tribes such as the Garasia and Bilala, which descended from mixed Rajput and Bhil marriages. Unlike the subjugation of the Dalits, the Adivasis often enjoyed autonomy and, depending on region, evolved mixed hunter-gatherer and farming economies, controlling their lands as a joint patrimony of the tribe. In some areas, securing Adivasi approval and support was considered crucial by local rulers, and larger Adivasi groups were able to sustain their own kingdoms in central India. The Minas and Gond Rajas of Garha Mandala and Chanda are examples of an Adivasi aristocracy that ruled in this region, and were not only the hereditary leaders of their Gond subjects, but also held sway over substantial communities of non-tribals who recognized them as their feudal lords. Medieval India The historiography of relationships between the Advaisis and the rest of the Indian society is patchy. There are references to alliances between Ahom kings of Brahmaputra Valley and the Hill Nagas. This relative autonomy and collective ownership of Adivasi land by Adivasis was severely disrupted by the advent of the Mughals in the early 16th century. Rebellions against Mughal authority include the Bhil Rebellion of 1632 and the Bhil Gond Insurrection of 1643 which were both pacified by Mughal soldiers. With the advent of the Kachwaha Rajputs and Mughals into their territory, the Minas were gradually sidelined and pushed deep into the forests. As a result, historical literature has completely bypassed the Mina tribe. The combined army of Mughals and Barmal attacked the tribal king Bada Mina and killed him damaging 52 cots and 56 gates. Bada's treasure was shared between Mughals and Barmal. <laughs> <laughs> British period From the very early days of British rule, the tribesmen resented the British encroachments upon their tribal system. They were found resisting or supporting their brethren of Tamar and Halda in rebellion. Nor did their Raja welcome the British administrative innovations. Beginning in the 18th century, the British added to the consolidation of feudalism in India, first under the Jagardari system and then under the Zamindari system. Beginning with the permanent settlement imposed by the British in Bengal and Bihar, which later became the template for a deepening of feudalism throughout India, the older social and economic system in the country began to alter radically. Land, both forest areas belonging to Adivasis and settled farmland belonging to non-Adivasi peasants, was rapidly made the legal property of British-designated zamindars landlords, who in turn moved to extract the maximum economic benefit possible from their newfound property and subjects. Adivasi lands sometimes experienced an influx of non-local settlers, often brought from far away as in the case of Muslims and Sikhs brought to coal territory by the zamindars to better exploit local land, forest and labor. Deprived of the forests and resources they traditionally depended on and sometimes coerced to pay taxes, many Adivasis were forced to borrow at usurious rates from moneylenders, often the zamindars themselves. When they were unable to pay, that forced them to become bonded laborers for the zamindars. Often, far from paying off the principal of their debt, they were unable even to offset the compounding interest, and this was made the justification for their children working for the zamindar after the death of the initial borrower. In the case of the Andamanese Adivasis, long isolated from the outside world in autonomous societies, mere contact with outsiders was often sufficient to set off deadly epidemics in tribal populations, and it is alleged that some sections of the British government directly attempted to destroy some tribes. Land dispossession and subjugation by British and Zamindar interests resulted in a number of Adivasi revolts in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, such as the Santal Hul or Santhal Rebellion of 1855-56. Six. Although these were suppressed ruthlessly by the governing British authority the East India Company prior to 1858, and the British government after 1858, partial restoration of privileges to Adivasi elites e.g. to Moncus, the leaders of Munda tribes and some leniency in tax burdens resulted in relative calm, despite continuing and widespread dispossession, from the late 19th century onwards. The economic deprivation, in some cases, triggered internal Adivasi migrations within India that would continue for another century, including as labour for the emerging tea plantations in Assam. <laughs> Participation in Indian independence movement 
There were tribal reform and rebellion movements during the period of the British Empire, some of which also participated in the Indian independence movement or attacked mission posts. There were several Adivasis in the Indian independence movement including Dharandar Buen, Laxman Naik, Jantya Bhil, Bangaru Devi and Rema Vasave. <laughs> List of rebellions during the period of British rule, India saw the rebellions of several then backward castes, mainly tribal peoples that revolted against British rule. These were Great Kuki Invasion of 1860s Halba Rebellion 1774-79 Chakma Rebellion 1776-1787 Chur Rebellion in Bengal 1795-1800 Bhopalpatnam struggle 1795 Kurta rebellion in Odisha 1817 BHIL rebellion 1822 to 1857 Homunda revolt 1816 to 1837 Paralkot rebellion 1825 Khand rebellion 1836 Tarapur rebellion 1842 to 54 Maria Rebellion 1842 to 63 First Freedom Struggle by Sidhu Murmu and Kanu Murmu 1856 to 57 BHIL Rebellion begun by Tantya Tope in Banswara 1858 Kohli Revolt 1859 Gond Rebellion begun by Ramji Gond in Adilabad 1860 Maria Rebellion 1876 Rani Rebellion 1878 to 82 Bumkal 1910 The Kuki Uprising 1917 to 1919 in Manipur Rampa Rebellion of 1879 Visagapatnam now Visakhapatnam district Rampa Rebellion 1922 to 1924 Visakhapatnam district Santhal Revolt 1885 to 1886 Munda Rebellion Yadav Rebellion Thanu Nayak arm struggle against Nizam in Telangana in 1940s. Topic: <tribal>, Tribal classification criteria and demands. Population complexities and the controversies surrounding ethnicity and language in India sometimes make the official recognition of groups as Adivasis by way of inclusion in the scheduled tribes list political and contentious. However, regardless of their language family affiliations, Australoid and Negrito groups that have survived as distinct forest, mountain or island dwelling tribes in India and are often classified as Adivasi. The relatively autonomous Mongoloid tribal groups of northeastern India including Khasis, Apatani and Nagas, who are mostly Austro-Asiatic or Tibeto-Burman speakers, are also considered to be Adivasis. This area comprises 7.5% of India's land area but 20% of its Adivasi population. However, not all autonomous northeastern groups are considered Adivasis, for instance, the Tibeto-Burman-speaking Maiti of Manipur were once tribal but, having been settled for many centuries, are caste Hindus. It is also difficult, for a given social grouping, to definitively decide whether it is a caste or a tribe. A combination of internal social organization, relationship with other groups, self-classification and perception by other groups has to be taken into account to make a categorization, which is at best inexact and open to doubt. These categorizations have been diffused for thousands of years, and even ancient formulators of caste discriminatory legal codes which usually only applied to settled populations, and not Adivasis were unable to come up with clean distinctions. Topic. Demands for tribal classification The additional difficulty in deciding whether a group meets the criteria to be Adivasi or not are the aspirational movements created by the federal and state benefits, including job and educational reservations, enjoyed by groups listed as scheduled tribes STs. In Manipur, Maiti'i commentators have pointed to the lack of scheduled tribe status as a key economic disadvantage for Maiti's competing for jobs against groups that are classified as scheduled tribes. In Assam, Rajabangshi representatives have demanded scheduled tribe status as well. In Rajasthan, the Gujar community has demanded street status, even blockading the national capital of Delhi to press their demand. 
However, the government of Rajasthan declined the Gujar's demand, stating the Gujars are treated as upper caste and are by no means a tribe. In several cases, these claims to tribalhood are disputed by tribes who are already listed in the schedule and fear economic losses if more powerful groups are recognized as scheduled tribes. For instance, the Rajabangshi demand faces resistance from the Bodo tribe, and the Mina tribe has vigorously opposed Gujar aspirations to be recognized as a scheduled tribe. Topic: <laughs> Endogamy, exogamy, and ethnogenesis. Part of the challenge is that the endogamous nature of tribes is also conformed to by the vast majority of Hindu castes. Indeed, many historians and anthropologists believe that caste endogamy reflects the once tribal origins of the various groups who now constitute the settled Hindu castes. Another defining feature of caste Hindu society, which is often used to contrast them with Muslim and other social groupings, is lineage, clan or gotra and village exogamy. However, these in marriage taboos are also held ubiquitously among tribal groups, and do not serve as reliable differentiating markers between caste and tribe. Again, this could be an ancient import from tribal society into settled Hindu castes. Tribes such as the Muslim Gujars of Kashmir and the Kalash of Pakistan observe these exogamous traditions in common with caste Hindus and non Kashmiri Adivasis, though their surrounding Muslim populations do not. Some anthropologists, however, draw a distinction between tribes who have continued to be tribal and tribes that have been absorbed into caste society in terms of the breakdown of tribal and therefore caste boundaries, and the proliferation of new mixed caste groups. In other words, ethnogenesis the construction of new ethnic identities in tribes occurs through a fission process where groups splinter off as new tribes, which preserves endogamy, whereas with settled castes it usually occurs through intermixture in violation of strict endogamy. Other criteria Unlike castes, which form part of a complex and interrelated local economic exchange system, tribes tend to form self-sufficient economic units. For most tribal people, land use rights traditionally derive simply from tribal membership. Tribal society tends to the egalitarian, with its leadership based on ties of kinship and personality rather than on hereditary status. Tribes typically consist of segmentary lineages whose extended families provide the basis for social organization and control. Tribal religion recognizes no authority outside the tribe. Any of these criteria may not apply in specific instances. Language does not always give an accurate indicator of tribal or caste status. Especially in regions of mixed population, many tribal groups have lost their original languages and simply speak local or regional languages. In parts of Assam, an area historically divided between warring tribes and villages, Increased contact among villagers began during the colonial period, and has accelerated since independence in 1947. A pidgin Assamese developed, whereas educated tribal members learnt Hindi and, in the late 20th century, English. Self-identification and group loyalty do not provide unfailing markers of tribal identity either. In the case of stratified tribes, the loyalties of clan, kin, and family may well predominate over those of tribe. In addition, tribes cannot always be viewed as people living apart. The degree of isolation of various tribes has varied tremendously. The Gons, Santals, and Bills traditionally have dominated the regions in which they have lived. Moreover, tribal society is not always more egalitarian than the rest of the rural populace. Some of the larger tribes, such as the Gons, are highly stratified. The apparently wide fluctuation in estimates of South Asia's tribal population through the 20th century gives a sense of how unclear the distinction between tribal and non-tribal can be. India's 1931 census enumerated 22 million tribal people, in 1941 only 10 million were counted, but by 1961 some 30 million and in 1991 nearly 68 million tribal members were included. The differences among the figures reflect changing census criteria and the economic incentives individuals have to maintain or reject classification as a tribal member. These gyrations of census data serve to underline the complex relationship between caste and tribe. Although, in theory, these terms represent different ways of life and ideal types, in reality they stand for a continuum of social groups. 
In areas of substantial contact between tribes and castes, social and cultural pressures have often tended to move tribes in the direction of becoming castes over a period of years. Tribal peoples with ambitions for social advancement in Indian society at large have tried to gain the classification of caste for their tribes. On occasion, an entire tribe or part of a tribe joined a Hindu sect and thus entered the caste system en masse. If a specific tribe engaged in practices that Hindus deemed polluting, the tribe's status when it was assimilated into the caste hierarchy would be affected. Religion The majority of Adivasi practice Hinduism and Christianity. During the last two decades Adivasi from Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand have converted to Protestant groups. Adivasi beliefs vary by tribe, and are usually different from the historical Vedic religion, with its monistic underpinnings, Indo-European deities who are often cognates of ancient Iranian, Greek and Roman deities, e.g. Mitra, Mithra, Mithras, lack of idol worship and lack of a concept of reincarnation. Animism Animism from Latin animus, I, soul, life, is the worldview that non-human entities animals, plants, and inanimate objects or phenomena possess a spiritual essence. The Encyclopedia of Religion and Society estimates that 1–5% of India's population is animist. India's government recognizes that India's indigenous subscribe to pre Hindu animist based religions. Animism is used in the anthropology of religion as a term for the belief system of some indigenous tribal peoples, especially prior to the development of organized religion. Although each culture has its own different mythologies and rituals, animism is said to describe the most common, foundational thread of indigenous peoples' spiritual or supernatural perspectives. The animistic perspective is so fundamental, mundane, everyday and taken for granted that most animistic indigenous people do not even have a word in their languages that corresponds to animism or even religion. The term is an anthropological construct rather than one designated by the people themselves. <laughs> Donyi Polo Danyi Polo is the designation given to the indigenous religions, of animistic and shamanic type, of the Tani, from Arunachal Pradesh, in northeastern India. The name, Danyi Polo, means, sun moon. <laughs> Sanamahi Sanamahism is the worship of Sanamahi, the eternal force, cells responsible for the continuity of living creations. Sanamahi referred here is not to be confused with Laning Thou Sanamahi, the supreme house dwelling god of the Sanamahism. The religion has a great and unique traditional history which has been preserved till date for worshipping ancestors as Almighty. Thus it signifies that Sanamahism is the worship of eternal force, cells present in living creations. Sadaba Mapu, the creator god of Sanamahism. Sanamahism is one of the oldest religion of Southeast Asia. It originated in Manipur and is mainly practiced by the Maiti, Kabui, Zelangrong and other communities who inhabit in Manipur, Assam, Tripura. Topic: <laughs> Sarnaism. Sarnaism or Sarna, local languages, Sarna Dorum, meaning religion of the holy woods defines the indigenous religions of the Adivasi populations of the states of central East India, such as the Munda, the Ho, the Santali, the Kurik, and the others. The Munda, Ho, Santhal and Oran tribe followed the Sarna religion, where Sarna means sacred grove. Their religion is based on the oral traditions passed from generation to generation. It strongly believes in one god, the Great Spirit. Other tribal animist Animist hunter gatherer Nayaka, people of Nigril's Hills of South India. Animism is the traditional religion of Nicobarese people. Their religion is marked by the dominance and interplay with spirit worship, witch doctors, and animal sacrifice. <laughs> Hinduism
Topic: <inaudible> Adivasi roots of modern Hinduism. Some historians and anthropologists assert that much of what constitutes folk Hinduism today is actually descended from an amalgamation of Adivasi faiths, idol worship practices and deities, rather than the original Indo-Aryan faith. This also includes the sacred status of certain animals such as monkeys, cows, fish, matsya, peacocks, cobras nagas, and elephants and plants such as the sacred fig pipal, osamum tenuiflorum tulsi, and azadarashta indica neem, which may once have held totemic importance for certain Adivasi tribes. <laughs> Adivasi sants A san is an Indian holy man, and a title of a devotee or ascetic, especially in North and East India. Generally a holy or saintly person is referred to as a Mahatma, Paramahamsa, or Swami, or given the prefix Shri or Srila before their name. The term is sometimes misrepresented in English as Hindu saint, although san is unrelated to saint. San Budu Bhagat, led the Kohl insurrection 1831 aimed against tax imposed on Mundas by Muslim rulers. San Dira or Kanapa Nayanar 1, one of 63 Nayanar Shaivite sants, a hunter from whom Lord Shiva gladly accepted food offerings. It is said that he poured water from his mouth on the Shivlingam and offered the Lord swine flesh. Two. San Dudalinath, Gujarati, a 17th or 18th century devotee p. 4, the story of historic people of India the Kolas San Ganga Narain, led the Bhumij Revolt 1832 aimed against missionaries and British colonialists. San Gurudev Kalacharan Brahma or Guru Brahma, a Bodo who's founded the Brahma Dharma aimed against missionaries and colonialists. The Brahma Dharma movement sought to unite peoples of all religions to worship God together and survives even today. San Kalu Dev, Punjab, related with fisherman community Nishada San Kubara, ethnic Gujarati, taught for over 35 years, and had 20,000 followers in his time. San Jatra Oran, Oran, led the Tana Bhagat movement 1914 aimed against the missionaries and British colonialists. San Tantya Mama BHIL, a BHIL after whom a movement is named after, the Jananayak Tantya BHIL. San Tirumangayal Var, Kalar, composed the six Vedangas in beautiful Tamil verse. Three. Saint Kaleen Guru Kaleen Murmu, is the most beloved person among Santal tribes community who was widely popular Nagam Guru, guru of early histories in 14th century by the references of their forefathers. Topic. Sages Bhakta Shabari, a Nishada woman who offered Sri Rama and Sri Laxmana her half-eaten ber fruit, which they gratefully accepted when they were searching for Sri Sita Devi in the forest. Topic. Maharishis Maharshi Matanga, Matanga Bhil, Guru of Bhakta Shabari. In fact, chandalas are often addressed as Matanga in passages like Varaha Purana 1.139. 91. <inaudible> Avatars Bursa Bhagwan or Bursa Munda, considered an avatar of Khazra Kora. People approached him as Singbanga, the sun god. His sect included Christian converts, for, he and his clan, the Mundas, were connected with Vaishnavite traditions as they were influenced by Sri Chaitanya. 5. Bursa was very close to the Panray brothers Vaishnavites. Karada, the form of Lord Shiva as a hunter. It is mentioned in the Mahabharata. The Karpalikavu Sri Mahadeva temple, Kerala adores Lord Shiva in this avatar and is known to be one of the oldest surviving temples in Bharat. Vedakurumakan, the son of Lord Karada. Kaladutaka or Vaikunthanatha, Kalar robber, avatar of Lord Vishnu. 6. Other tribals and Hinduism Some Hindus believe that Indian tribals are close to the romantic ideal of the ancient Sylvan culture of the Vedic people. Madhav Sadashiv Golwakar said, The tribals can be given yajñapavita. 
they should be given equal rights and footings in the matter of religious rights, in temple worship, in the study of Vedas, and in general, in all our social and religious affairs. This is the only right solution for all the problems of casteism found nowadays in our Hindu society." At the Lingaraj temple in Bhubaneswar, there are Brahmin and Badu, tribal priests. The Badus have the most intimate contact with the deity of the temple, and only they can bathe and adorn it. The bills are mentioned in the Mahabharata. The Bhil boy Ekalavya's teacher was Drona, and he had the honor to be invited to Yudhishira's Rajasua Yajna at Indraprastha. Indian tribals were also part of royal armies in the Ramayana and in the Arthashastra. Shabari was a Bhil woman who offered Rama and Lakshmana jujubis when they were searching for Sita in the forest. Matanga, a Bhil, became a Brahmana, ed against this custom. <laughs> Demands for a separate religious code Some Adivasi organizations have demanded that a distinct religious code be listed for Adivasis in the 2011 census of India. The All India Adivasi Conference was held on 1 and 2 January 2011 at Burnpur, Asansal, West Bengal. 750 delegates were present from all parts of India and cast their votes for religion code as follows, Sari Dorum 632, Sarna 51, Kruvalism 14 and other religions 03. Census of India <laughs> Tribal system Tribals are not part of the caste system, and usually constitute egalitarian societies. Christian tribals do not automatically lose their traditional tribal rules. When in 1891 a missionary asked 150 Munda Christians to interdine with people of different rank, only 20 Christians did so, and many converts lost their new faith. Father Hagenbeek concluded on this episode that these rules are not pagan, but a sign of national sentiment and pride," and wrote, On the contrary, while proclaiming the equality of all men before God, we now tell them, preserve your race pure, keep our customs, refrain from eating with lohars blacksmiths, turis bamboo workers and other people of lower rank. To become good Christians, it interdining is not required. However, many scholars argue that the claim that tribals are an egalitarian society in contrast to a caste-based society is a part of a larger political agenda by some to maximize any differences from tribal and urban societies. According to scholar Konrad Elst, caste practices and social taboos among Indian tribals date back to antiquity. The Munda tribals not only practice tribal endogamy and commensality, but also observe a jati division within the tribe, buttressed by notions of social pollution, a mythological explanation and harsh punishments. A Munda Catholic theologian testifies, the tribals of Chahotanagpur are an endogamous tribe. They usually do not marry outside the tribal community, because to them the tribe is sacred. The way to salvation is the tribe. Among the Santals, it is tabooed to marry outside the tribe or inside one's clan, just as Hindus marry inside their caste and outside their gotra. More precisely, to protect their tribal solidarity, the Santals have very stringent marriage laws. A Santal cannot marry a non-Santal or a member of his own clan. The former is considered as a threat to the tribe's integrity, while the latter is considered incestuous. Among the Ho of Chahotanagpur, the tresses which occasion the exclusion from the tribe without chance of appeal, are essentially those concerning endogamy and exogamy. Interdining has also been prohibited by many Indian tribal peoples. <laughs> Adivasi STs demography in India According to the Constitution Scheduled Castes Orders Amendment Act, 1990, scheduled tribe can belong to any religion. The scheduled tribe population in Jharkhand constitutes 26.2% of the state. Tribals in Jharkhand mainly follow Sarnaism, an animistic religion. Chhattisgarh has also 32-25% scheduled tribe population. Assam has 40 lakh Adivasis. Adivasis in India mainly follow animism, Hinduism and Christianity. Education 
Tribal communities in India are the least educationally developed. First generation learners have to face social, psychological and cultural barriers to get education. This has been one of the reason for poor performance of tribal students in schools. Poor literacy rate since independence has resulted in absence of tribals in academia and higher education. The literacy rate for STs has gone up from 8.5% male 13.8%, female 3.2% in 1961 to 29.6% male 40.6%, female 18.2% in 1991 and to 40% male 59%, female 37% in 1999-2000. States with large proportion of STs like Mizoram, Nagaland and Meghalaya have high literacy rate while states with large number of tribals like Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Rajasthan and Andhra Pradesh have low tribal literacy rate. Tribal students have very high dropout rates during school education, extending the system of primary education into tribal areas and reserving places for needing them, they say, to work in the fields. On the other hand, in those parts of the Northeast where tribes have generally been spared the wholesale onslaught of outsiders, schooling has helped tribal people to secure political and economic benefits. The education system there has provided a core of highly trained tribal members in the professions and high-ranking administrative posts. Tribal children in middle and high schools and higher education institutions are central to government policy, but efforts to improve a tribe's educational status have had mixed results. Recruitment of qualified teachers and determination of the appropriate language of instruction also remain troublesome. Commission after commission on the language question has called for instruction, at least at the primary level, in the student's native language. In some regions, tribal children entering school must begin by learning the official regional language, often one completely unrelated to their tribal language. Many tribal schools are plagued by high dropout rates. Children attend for the first three to four years of primary school and gain a smattering of knowledge, only to lapse into illiteracy later. Few who enter continue up to the tenth grade, of those who do, few manage to finish high school. Therefore, very few are eligible to attend institutions of higher education, where the high rate of attrition continues. Members of agrarian tribes like the Gons often are reluctant to send their children to school. An academy for teaching and preserving Adivasi languages and culture was established in 1999 by the Basha Research and Publication Center. The Adivasi Academy is located at Teja in Gujarat. Topic Tribal languages Mizo language Chakma language Kui language Gandhi language Ho language Munda – Santali language Kuruk language Kukni language Gamut language Vasavi language Rathvi language Chahotautapur Baroda and Madhya Pradesh border village people communicate by Rathvi language. Topic. Economy Most tribes are concentrated in heavily forested areas that combine inaccessibility with limited political or economic significance. Historically, the economy of most tribes was subsistence agriculture or hunting and gathering. Tribal members traded with outsiders for the few necessities they lacked, such as salt and iron. A few local Hindu craftsmen might provide such items as cooking utensils. In the early 20th century, however, large areas fell into the hands of non-tribals, on account of improved transportation and communications. Around 1900, many regions were opened by the British government to settlement through a scheme by which inward migrants received ownership of land free in return for cultivating it. For tribal people, however, land was often viewed as a common resource, free to whoever needed it. By the time tribals accepted the necessity of obtaining formal land titles, they had lost the opportunity to lay claim to lands that might rightfully have been considered theirs. The colonial and post-independence regimes belatedly realized the necessity of protecting tribals from the predations of outsiders and prohibited the sale of tribal lands. Although an important loophole in the form of land leases was left open, tribes made some gains in the mid-20th century, and some land was returned to tribal peoples despite obstruction by local police and land officials. In the 1970s, tribal peoples came again under intense land pressure, especially in central India. Migration into tribal lands increased dramatically, as tribal people lost title to their lands in many ways, lease, forfeiture from debts, or bribery of land registry officials. Other non-tribals simply squatted, or even lobbied governments to classify them as tribal to allow them to compete with the formerly established tribes. 
In any case, many tribal members became landless laborers in the 1960s and 1970s, and regions that a few years earlier had been the exclusive domain of tribes had an increasingly mixed population of tribals and non-tribals. Government efforts to evict non-tribal members from illegal occupation have proceeded slowly. When evictions occur at all, those ejected are usually members of poor, lower castes. Improved communications, roads with motorized traffic, and more frequent government intervention figured in the increased contact that tribal peoples had with outsiders. Commercial highways and cash crops frequently drew non-tribal people into remote areas. By the 1960s and 1970s, the resident non-tribal shopkeeper was a permanent feature of many tribal villages. Since shopkeepers often sell goods on credit demanding high interest, many tribal members have been drawn deeply into debt or mortgage their land. Merchants also encourage tribals to grow cash crops such as cotton or castor oil plants, which increases tribal dependence on the market for necessities. Indebtedness is so extensive that although such transactions are illegal, traders sometimes sell their debtors to other merchants, much like indentured peons. The final blow for some tribes has come when non-tribals, through political jockeying, have managed to gain legal tribal status, that is, to be listed as a scheduled tribe. Tribes in the Himalayan foothills have not been as hard-pressed by the intrusions of non-tribal. Historically, their political status was always distinct from the rest of India. Until the British colonial period, there was little effective control by any of the empires centered in peninsular India. The region was populated by autonomous feuding tribes. The British, in efforts to protect the sensitive northeast frontier, followed a policy dubbed the inner line. Non tribal people were allowed into the areas only with special permission. Post independence governments have continued the policy, protecting the Himalayan tribes as part of the strategy to secure the border with China. Government policies on forest reserves have affected tribal peoples profoundly. Government efforts to reserve forests have precipitated armed if futile, resistance on the part of the tribal peoples involved. Intensive exploitation of forests has often meant allowing outsiders to cut large areas of trees while the original tribal inhabitants were restricted from cutting, and ultimately replacing mixed forests capable of sustaining tribal life with single product plantations. Nontribals have frequently bribed local officials to secure effective use of reserved forest lands. The northern tribes have thus been sheltered from the kind of exploitation that those elsewhere in South Asia have suffered. In Arunachal Pradesh, formerly part of the Northeast Frontier Agency, for example, tribal members control commerce and most lower-level administrative posts. Government construction projects in the region have provided tribes with a significant source of cash. Some tribes have made rapid progress through the education system the role of early missionaries was significant in this regard. Instruction was begun in Assamese but was eventually changed to Hindi. By the early 1980s, English was taught at most levels. Northeastern tribal people have thus enjoyed a certain measure of social mobility. The continuing economic alienation and exploitation of many Adivasis was highlighted as a systematic failure by the Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh in a 2009 conference of chief ministers of all 29 Indian states, where he also cited this as a major cause of the Naxalite unrest that has affected areas such as the Red Corridor. <laughs> Notable Adivasis Independence movement. Rani Gaden Liu, political leader, independence fighter Bursa Munda, independence fighter Laxman Nayak, independence fighter, activist Komaram Beam, independence fighter Sidhu and Kanhu Murmu, independence fighters Baba Tilka Maji, independence fighter Rindo Maji Topic politics and social service Kantilal Buria, Lok Sabha MP, tribal rights activist, former Union Cabinet Minister of Tribal Affairs, Agriculture and Food, veteran Congress leader from Madhya Pradesh. Kishore Chandra Deo, Lok Sabha MP, tribal rights activist, former Union Cabinet Minister of Tribal Affairs, Steel and Mines, tribal chief of Karupam, veteran Congress leader from Andhra Pradesh. Vincent Pala, Lok Sabha MP, former Union Minister of Water Resources, Congress Leader. 
Kanjibai Patel, politician Lalthanhala, politician Zoramthanga, politician Jewel Oram, politician Ramachar Netam, politician Mahendra Karma, politician Kartik Oran, politician Nafu Rio, politician P. A. Songma, politician Karya Munda, former Deputy Speaker, 15th Lok Sabha Harishankar Brahma, former Chief Election Commissioner of India Soni Sori, political activist Dayamani Barla, journalist, activist Tulasi Munda, education activist C. K. Janu, social activist Jaipal Singh, hockey player, Adivasi activist. Sishila Kirketa, member of the 14th Lok Sabha of India Sarbananda Sanawal 14th Chief Minister of Assam Mohanbhai Sanjabai Delkar 6-time member of the Lok Sabha of India from Dadra and Nagar Haveli. Tribal leader of southern part of Gujarat, tribal Robin Hood Shibu Soran, Jharkhand movement leader, 3rd CM of Jharkhand, member of parliament, social activities. Topic: Art and Literature. Ram Dayal Munda, scholar, artist, Padma Shri awardee. Tijan Bai, Indian Pandavani performer. Anuj Lagoon, Indian polymath. Rupnath Brahma, poet. Jangar Singh Shyam, artist, founder of Jangar Kalam. Venkat Shyam, artist. Baju Shyam, artist. Temsula Ao, poet, writer. Maming Dai, journalist, author, former civil servant. Topic: <inaudible> Administration. Armstrong Pame, IAS. Rajiv Topno, IAS. G. C. Murmu, IAS. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Sports. M.C. Mary K.O.M., boxer Malavith Purna, mountaineer Durga Boro, footballer Kavita Rout, athlete Limba Ram, archer Lakshmirani Maji, archer Munmoon Lagoon, footballer Lal Mohan Hansda, footballer Sanjay Balmuchu, footballer Baichung Bhutia, former captain, Indian football team Dilip Turki, former captain, Indian hockey team Virendra Lakra, Indian hockey team Manohar Topno, Indian hockey team Masira Surin, Indian women's hockey team Sunita Lakra, Indian women's hockey team Jodi Sunita Kulu, former member, Indian women's hockey team Michael Kindo, former member, Indian men's hockey team, Arjuna awardee Shiloh Malsamtawanga, footballer Laurindika Ralt, footballer Gigi Lalpeklua, footballer Military Albert Ika, Param Veer Chakra, Indo-Pakistani War of 1971 Rani Durgavati, Gond Queen Sangram Shah Others Boa Sr. Hypou Jadanang Bhima Bhoi Kalacharan Brahma Angami Zapu Faizo Shirhozeli Lizetsu Shabari Lako Bodra – Varang Ks Haidai script creator, writer, activist Valmiki – composer of Ramayana Nilizu Uso Tantia Bill Kanapa Nayanar Pandit Raghunath Murmu, Chiki script creator, writer, activist Tirumangai Alvar Topic Tribal movement Mohanbhai Sanjabai Delkar Tribal leader Adivasi Bachao Andolan Tribal movement JJs, by Dr. Hiralal All India Adivasi street community get together and fight for good rector against government. Gallery Some portraits of Adivasi people. Topic See also Equals equals notes. <laughs>